hi there and welcome back to another episode at station road now today finally in this episode get on to weathering the disused viaduct which i mostly completed around about a month ago and of course it's taken that long to get round to the weathering side of the viaduct So of course there's been a few videos in between but it's been about a month since I last worked on the viaduct and this viaduct TMD sort of area or depot area so I thought it was high time I cracked into it and of course I've just been so busy with so many other projects on domestic duties and all of that type of thing that I just really haven't had a chance because I knew that the weathering side of doing this viaduct would be quite time consuming. So the first process that I actually undertook was actually doing a practice run actually on one of the kind of draft structures that I'd built so it was one of the preliminary prototypes where I was sort of ironing out the design side of it so I thought what better way to sort of get an idea of how I want the weathering to be applied how how filthy it needs to be or how light the weathering needs to be so I worked on one of the single module units so we've got that here and this is the pylon so that's been weathered up and of course I then went over this with a matte clear varnish and then this is the actual module section here so I'm quite happy with the result of that as you can see there's a certain amount of streaking and grime the things that have run down the brickwork now I've actually just done this side just to show you a comparison so that's the side that's been weathered and if I spin it around and that has not been weathered so you can clearly see the weathering certainly makes an improvement it gives it more of a organic feel which you'll see me reference that term quite a bit in this video organic lifelike but not exactly prototypical obviously but yeah it just gives it a sense of well used and a little bit run down so of course we can pop this onto our column And that's the sort of result that I managed to work up just on this preliminary prototype. So I think without further ado, we'll just get into the weathering process where I sort of go for a little bit of a step by step process. And then, of course, that is then sped up because, as you can imagine, this took a fair few hours to do so we'll jump over to that now so now that I've had a crack at weathering on the example section of viaduct it's a case now of weathering this entire structure so this is going to take quite a while to do this it is a large amount of weathering to do so what I'll do is I'll just sort of start out with some of the areas and the order of the weathering as I go but essentially we'll speed it up in the end so the plan is that we'll start with the inside of the parapet walls and once we've done that then we'll start with the inside sections of these arches and the columns as well and the last part will actually be weathering the fascia of the viaduct because essentially with all the handling and so forth 
if I do that last then I'm not going to sort of smudge and rub things off. So I've done a few videos before obviously with weathering and of course just to recap I use ground up chalk pastels which of course I just shove through a coffee grinder. So we've got three different blends here. There's a black, there's quite a sort of a dark brown and then there's sort of a, a more sort of a medium brown. So the idea is that they sort of build up the layers and potentially starting with the lighter browns and working their way up and then finally with a bit of black application as well. And in terms of brushes, the makeup brushes work the best. Normal paint brushes, they, they eventually sort of just go all bushy, whereas makeup brushes tend to keep their shape quite nicely. So we've got a, a couple of fine brushes here which are sort of chiseled and then sort of larger brushes here to sort of go over larger areas and so forth or just sort of eventually brush off any excess powder. So yeah that's essentially the tools and materials. So I'll start with this parapet up here and I'm going for the actual dark brown on these ones. This is based on of course the example one that I tested and the dark brown seemed to work the best. So we'll start there. Now it's just a case of dabbing on a reasonable clump of the powder and then what I'm doing is I'm actually just working in along the top edge. Now I'm kind of dabbing it so it's stippling rather than brushing it on because you want the bristles to kind of I guess in a way it's sort of pounding the powder into the brickwork or you know in this case printed texture and it just sort of a case of going along the top edge because I'm kind of going on the basis and it's looking at sort of examples that tends to be a lot of grime obviously that builds up under the capping stones so it's a case of going along here and what I might do is we'll just do one section through here and then of course kind of like wash and repeat for all the other inside parapet wall so we don't need to sort of go through the entire process because I think this weathering job is going to take several hours to complete so just running along this top edge under the capping stones and it doesn't matter actually if a bit of powder gets on those capping stones because that sort of weathers those up as well and I'm just sort of as I said stippling or dabbing it on and then once you've got that what you end up with is the powder actually drops down and it's it's just piled up here along the road bed. Now what I actually do is push that in along the bottom. So we're actually you know I guess in a way conserving weathering powder and that we're just going to squish into here and that is kind of going to resemble you know track dust because obviously there's going to be ballast built up here. Now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, this is not actually going to be an active line and it's going to be disused, possibly not for too long. Maybe it's been out of action for possibly maybe five to 10 years. So based on the layout that I have here, which sort of dates from the late 50s, through to the early 70s that you know maybe it's only been out of action for a short time so now with the large brush here is it's a case of just going along and dusting that getting all the excess dust off and essentially that's one section done through here so I'll carry on, do the, all, all the other inside parapets and we'll come back when I've finished that. Right, so I've now got all the inside of the parapet walls weathered up and 
can probably see it starting to make a difference already and just gives I guess the the, the model the viaduct more of an organic feel about it and the fact that it's analog done by hand rather than using airbrushes and that it's as I said got a more organic feel to it possibly more natural feel rather than airbrushing that to me kind of looks a little bit more like Photoshop modeling so now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the whole viaduct upside down and just rest it there and we're now going to do the underside of these arches and this might be a little bit tricky more so down here on this one here if it's in view move it over just slightly as <laughs> there's not a lot of room to work in here and theoretically I probably should have done all the weathering on this before I put in this blocks of landform here but you know you live and learn <laughs> so we'll start with just one of these arches in the middle and once again I'll meet up with you all again at the end so I'm using this brush here which is sort of a a more of a bushy makeup brush and the idea is I'm actually just dabbing the powder right through the middle like so and then the idea is that we're just going to do long strokes up each side so starting with this side and we're keeping the strokes even so we're not going across ways we're actually running these strokes as if it's weathered water pollution all of that kind of thing is running down the arches so we get a a subtle line of gravity I guess you would call it and the theory is is that where I've dumped the powder in the middle that's where it's going to be a little bit darker a little bit more grimy these undersides of the viaduct were generally always quite filthy so we're just going to actually blow most of it out of there and then we're going to use our large brush here once again and just sweep out the excess powders and that's what we sort of end up with so we sort of end up with some random dark streaks and lighter patches and it runs in alignment with the arch itself so the plan is once I've resprayed this whole viaduct with a matte clear varnish I'm then actually going to add in on the underside of these arches some of that white streaking it's sort of I'm not quite sure what it is but it's sort of where I think calcium or whatever deposits leach out of the brickwork and sort of run down and you often saw that on the underside of viaduct so that's going to be added at a later stage so the next step now is we're going to flip the viaduct back over again and the next part to weather up is the inside of the columns here now this is probably going to be a little bit more tricky getting in here so I'm going to be using once again one of the finer chisel brushes and once again the same powder so the dark brown and I've basically got to work along underneath these capping stones here work along this edge and then that will sort of run down a little bit so that's the plan there once I've actually 
gone over with the dark brown I'll then actually add in some black as well so there'll be some black accents that are going to be running down the wall and also up underneath these capping stones here so we'll, once again I'll just do one arch section or I might even actually just do one more let's say we'll do this one in here because it's going to be the easiest and then of course I'll speed through the rest of it and catch you back at the end so we'll do this one here and it may or may not show up on the camera terribly well so I will take some footage once I've done this so once again it's a dark brown and it's a case of working this in up on this top edge underneath this capping stone and I'm hoping to be able to do this without having to go around both sides in other words flip this viaduct around or have to work from the other side so it's a case of sort of once again stippling it up underneath this capping stone in here and then working it down in a vertical fashion so we've got to keep that brush stroke consistent so we sort of get that kind of streaking effect and it's a bit hard to see really unfortunately in this light and I think this area this is going to be what's going to be more time consuming I think than the bits we've done so far so I'm just sort of applying a bit of extra the, of this dark brown that streaks a little bit further down so we don't sort of we don't want to sort of have a, a perfectly nice even gradient of grime we want to sort of have these kind of streaks where the weathering or the atmospheric conditions have created these streaks down here so and then we just I'm just going to use the large brush here again and just go over the whole thing and we'll just brush that lot out of there so I think that's looking okay it's a bit difficult to see from here now the reason I'm doing it this way up I can't really sort of turn the viaduct on its end and work with these on a flat surface because both the ends of the viaduct are angled and I think it's just going to become too clumsy and cumbersome so now we're adding some black accents so same type of brush and we're just running this along here not too much this doesn't need to be as overall or covering I'm, I'm just kind of doing areas of it so we end up with some dark areas and then just normal brown areas and this is definitely a little bit more awkward than it was doing the example viaduct because access in here is not the best so just once again with the large brush just to brush all the excess off and it all kind of it also kind of feathers the tones together a little bit so that it's it, you don't sort of end up with any sort of sharp edges right so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to get my phone camera in here to video this and we can show you how it's looking so as you can see it's certainly making a difference there and I think that's about right what I need to do is above that capping stone is add in just a pinch of black to grind that up because that area there would probably fill up with quite a bit of grime in there so we'll do that and come back so that's with a little bit of black added to the top of that capping stone just above it so it blends it in and adds a little bit of grime that would actually build up in that area 
so that's the effect generally that I'm after so I'll carry on and do the rest of these inside sections of the columns right so we've now got all the inside of the columns all weathered up and as I mentioned a bit of dark brown first and then of course some highlights of black to really sort of get that sooty filthy weathered grime that sort of appears to be running down the brickwork so I think it's starting to take shape and it's looking a lot better now that we've got this weathering taking place it's really starting to now as I said sort of take on that really organic feel about it more natural look so now it's a case of finishing off with the fascias of the viaduct and of course as I mentioned I've left this till last just simply because of handling this large chunk of viaduct that I really sort of didn't want to be smudging too much of this stuff around so we'll start up here with the parapets very similar to what we did on the inside of the parapets and then work our way down so we'll start with our dark brown again and I will just speed through this footage because this will probably take a wee while as well Right, so that's one side of the viaduct fascia 
completed and it's certainly looking the part it's what I sort of was hoping to achieve a derelict rundown viaduct that's really just not looked after any longer obviously and it's pretty filthy and grimy so I've yet to do the other side of the viaduct so I'll do that and then the whole thing is going to get a coat of a matte varnish spray so that will sort of seal everything in and generally what the matte varnish does is it tends to darken everything down a little bit more and it kind of blends it in a bit it sort of helps to actually blend all of this in so although this might appear quite strong in places here that's sort of deliberately done that way because once you go over this with a matte spray it tends to sort of mellow everything out a little bit so as I said I'll do the other side we'll get the whole thing spray painted and come back and have a look at it right so the weathering is complete or at least I should say the base weathering so and it's now been given a matte coat of varnish and of course this is what I use it's the Citadel Manatorum varnish matte varnish very good varnish for doing this kind of stuff pricey but good so it's certainly looking the part now the only thing that I'm kind of a little bit annoyed about is for some reason and I noticed that when I was doing the weathering this blotchiness has come up here now that suspiciously looks like fingerprints <laughs> in there so I'm just thinking maybe when I was gluing these in or something maybe I had something on my fingers bit of glue or residue and that's gone on there and of course it's dried and gone clear and you couldn't see it but when the weathering took place and I sort of thought mm, that's a bit odd and of course when I've that varnish this it's now quite a bit more prominent but I'm not too worried about it because I've got two options I can either put in some kind of growth or foliage that's coming out of the brickwork I have seen that you know we've got ivy and things like that that are just protruding out of the brickwork maybe it's coming from up here and it's working its way up through the brickwork or because this is there's a hill out here maybe I'll just plonk a big tree in front of it and just to to block it so one of those two options I think will suffice so that's the side that you would normally see most of the time unfortunately as well and then this is the reverse side here which is you know um, it's hasn't got any of those issues in it so the only thing left to do of course as I mentioned before is using one of these ink tents pencils from Derwent is I'm actually going to run that through and of course it's kind of a bit like a watercolour pencil but it's like an ink and then using a damp brush you can actually sort of paint this out or, or bleed it out and feather it so that I'm going to do that in some areas in here because it, it seemed to be quite sort of common to sort of have that kind of uh, I guess it's some kind of calcium type build up that's leaching through the brickwork so I think the next step obviously for me to get on with is apart from this doing this white sort of calcium deposit type thing underneath is to actually start looking at the track bed and how that's going to work out now it's going to be disused I am going to go along with maybe the fact that there's there is actually still one intact line that's actually on one side the other side's been lifted up but maybe there's even the remnants of sleepers and things like that and also the indentation of where the track used to be within the ballast itself so that is the next stage of course the other thing that I do also need to weather up as of course the girder bridge section as well so I, I haven't got onto that yet so there we have it the weathering is now complete and I'm pretty happy with the end result 
of course the only bit is the wee blotchy areas which I mentioned in the video clip and of course what I might do is either hide them with some ivy or some kind of climbing foliage or plonk a tree in front of it as I've temporarily done just to see whether that might work and it, it kind of does it could be I guess a relatively realistic scene that we obviously further trees on that part of the hillside so certainly the streaking that runs down the brickwork and particularly where the girder section is I really think that helps bed that girder section into the main structure and gives it the sense it's been there a long time and of course it's left its streaked residue down the brickwork so it did take quite a few hours to weather up this entire structure and I think it's really it's the largest structure I've weathered so far and some of you may be wondering well why didn't I just photoshop the weathering in during the design phase and I could have actually done that the only thing with that is I've just essentially printed out full sheets of brickwork on A4 paper and then that's wrapped around now if I designed in the weathering effects in say Photoshop and then printed it out the only problem is if then got to try and align that with maybe corners of the columns and the arch work that goes underneath the arches and so forth and I wouldn't have had the freedom to just be able to trim out the brickwork as needed and as required so I didn't go down that route now the other option too as well is would have been to weather each of the modules as of course I've done here and then assemble everything afterwards now that is probably quite a viable way of going about it but you'd still really want to be able to weather all of the components and modules in one go rather than sort of separating them out because you could run the risk of things just not really matching up terribly well once the whole viaduct comes together so in the end I sort of thought no I really wanted to weather the structure as a complete unit just about fell over and in that way between each of the joins between each of these modules that you're getting an even spread of the weathering and then the weathering will actually match up between each of those modules so that's essentially the route that I took for that so as I mentioned of course the next step is actually getting on to the roadbed itself and starting to work out how this is all going to work so as I mentioned I'm definitely going to have one intact railway line on one side of course disused so it will be thoroughly rusted up it'll have weeds and orsals growing up in between the sleepers and the track and then the other track will be lifted so I may have some sleepers still partially in place on some of it and then in other areas of course the track has been lifted you've got the impression of where the sleepers used to be in the ballast and then of course there's going to be lots of weeds and smaller overgrowth I don't want to go too hard out I don't want to have full-on trees growing up in the viaduct I just sort of want it to be given the impression really I guess that the line hasn't been closed for too long as I mentioned maybe five ten years so there's still quite a telltale sign of what used to be there so hopefully I'll get onto that sooner rather than later and I'm pretty sure that will be coming up in the next episode so I certainly hope you've gathered some inspiration and ideas of course for your own layouts and gained some pointers on my technique that I use for weathering up structures and buildings so once again a huge massive thank you of course to everyone who's commented and left their feedback of course as per usual in the usual Julian style I have not responded for some time to a lot of those comments I just haven't had the time it's just been so crazy 
busy so hopefully in the next couple of weeks I will be able to respond to some of your comments so on that note with lots of things still to do I'll leave it there for today's episode do take care everyone look after yourselves of course don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time bye for now